we did change it to random. Okay, yeah. so, so so they made up a batch of random ballots and they put sure them through that machine right there, right? right. And then um, they just check the results and make sure that everything matches up. So like particularly each race, because they, you could key the race to the wrong slot if uh, right, the first program wrong. Right, checks each wrong. race. Uh-huh. Each race of the question is checked on the test. And if you could explain how the, um, how the random ballot work, I mean how the, uh, I'm talking to Nancy Whitlock at Supervisor Elections Office in, in uh, Pinellas Park. Um, I'll point it out there just to make it a little easier. But if you could just quickly explain the path, the path of the ballots coming through. So when, when, when a voter voted and they put it in the mail, right, and now it's in a, uh, it's here stored, uh -huh. and they can begin canvassing those ballots today before the day of the election. Um, and even you know, just explain what happens. Okay, the ballots are being opened today. They're being processed, but the results are locked in the system, they're not released. Uh -huh. and so the signature's checked? Signature's and, and checked. They're, they're scanned in so you know who returned their ballot and they can check online if their ballots made it back to headquarters, right. so to speak. Yes, on our home page we have check my ballot status. Uh -huh. They can look it up there and see if we received it or not. Right, and then if the signature's not on the ballot, there's no, they don't get notified though, they just they accidentally didn't sign it. That ballot's put to the side. Right. Currently, there is no provision to correct a ballot that's not signed, a ballot okay. envelope that's not signed. Now, if this, and now are all the signatures looked at as they came in? Yes. So they've been coming in for weeks, so we've been checking them as they came in. Right. So, so the funny signatures. Opened. Anything that's questionable comes to the canvassing board for review. If there's no question, if it looks exactly like it does on the file, then they go ahead and accept it and they're not brought down to be processed. Okay, but if it, if it, if Right, so then they're just put in, uh, what, different precinct boxes? We do process them by precincts, yes. It makes it easier to have it sorted. Uh-huh. And then the, um, and the ones that have a bad signature or the signature doesn't match are sent to the canvassing board for itemized review. review. Correct. Uh-huh. Okay. And then, let's see, is, that, is this a report, I guess, from the logic and accuracy test? Yes, they're looking over the logic and accuracy test. Do you know how many ballots are in that test stack? Sixty-eight ballots. Okay, and then, but they have, there's multiple scanners. So how does that work? If if that was one scanner that they ran the test ballots through, and don't you use more than one of these? There's another one over there. Is that one tested too? Right. We test all the ones that we're going to be using in the election. And and is that all the ones that you have, or do you only yes, use? Three. So you t use all three in this election. Uh, it just depends on what they're planning to do for this one. I'm not sure. Okay, because, I mean, one's a backup, right, in case one breaks. Right. So the one we saw the guy using was Scanner 2. Um, right, or it has a label on the corner, Scanner 2. I don't know if that's how you designate them. Oh, yeah, they have above them. Okay, and then, um, and what is happening over way right over there in that corner, in the other room? is reading in the memory sticks from the scanners to re to fill out the report on the, um, the results of the logic and accuracy test. Oh, that's not tied into the software for no, counting it ballots? Be, it has to be printed out separately from the system. Okay, so he takes the memory stick out of the scanner, puts it in a computer over there, and then prints the report. Right. And then okay. they compare it to the control results and make sure it matches. Okay. And and then if you want to recap upstairs again, you're saying they're opening and what's happening up here? Yes, upstairs we have ballot openers. They'll be opening bundles of fifty and just 
mixing up the stacks so that there's no way to match up the envelope with the ballot to ensure a secret ballot. And then those ballots are put in trays and brought downstairs. I thought that was, I thought they were all opened by machine. There's, the envelopes are sliced open by machine. Uh -huh. Oh, but, but the ballots aren't pulled out? No, no, we have to pull them out by hand because they're inside a secrecy sleeve inside the return envelope. So it's a manual process. Uh, so we okay. want to mix them up. We want to see how they make two stacks, and then after they finish that, they'll be shuffling each stack to make sure they're not, you know, we can't really match right up. I see. Good morning. Okay. How are you? Good morning. Here's Deborah Clark, our supervisor. Yes. How's it going? Good. I see that you're looking at the monitor. Would you like to go upstairs where they're actually opening the ballots? Uh, sure. Sure. Why sure. not? Okay. I can take you up. Okay. You, you want to do the back? Well, you can't do the back way. It's kind of... Well, we could go up the stairs. Either way. I think. Either way. Right, let just, me just grab you know, my bag here. Any, sure. And if you have any questions about the process... Uh, yeah, if you could just recap the... Um, I mean, I, my understanding is there's like 67 test ballots, and then they just went through the scanner, right? Um, and I was, I was talking to Nicole, so I'm not sure uh, exactly what happened after that. Um, I guess the, the report came out good, right? Well, we haven't verified the test results yet. That's what staff was running. Okay. This last test on the equipment before we start processing those uh, mail ballots that staff is opening right now. You have to do one more test on the equipment uh -huh. just before you start processing the ballots. Okay, and then, and then how do you do the I mean, the, the random set, the test set, do you just hand count those? The, no, no. The, well, first of all... I mean, how do, you, how do you test the machine counted the ballot rate? Okay. When we place a ballot order for any election, uh -huh. we add ballots in certain precincts that uh -huh. we are going to pull when we receive the ballot inventory. Uh -huh. We're going to pull those ballots to mark our test decks. We're going to mark them. I know some places use software to do it, but we actually sit down and mark those test ballots, uh -huh. just like voters would. Right. But the, the, the ballot card manufacturer doesn't know which precincts we're pulling from from test decks for obvious reasons. Right. So, oh, so I mean, you're also testing the quality of the ballots that absolutely. you got. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And because you don't want to mail a ballot, not one ballot, until you're sure that the votes marked on those ballots are going to be counted correctly by the equipment. Right. So the tests are created, the test decks are created by staff, and then those are run through the system mm -hmm. lots and lots of times. And then the results are verified a lot of times by staff before the canvassing board verifies them. Right. So they've, they've already been tested and retested, and then the formality of the canvassing board goes through the final yes. um, check through. Yes. And now, is, are each, does the canvassing board run a test through all the scanners or just one of the scanners? On the high speed scanners, the test deck was run through all of the ballot scanners that will be used for this election. Okay. And then, and the precincts, do those get tested separately? Yes. But yes. not every precinct, right? Not every precinct, but a precinct from every ballot style. Uh -huh. And we do that when we do the first test of the equipment. And those, uh, the precinct scanners are actually set up in the tab room for that first LNA test. Uh -huh. And the canvassing board members actually go in and feed those ballots through the scanners. Okay. So that was, you have like, what, four or five ballot styles? Four well, ballot I styles, think I think. we have five. We have the... the you have five, right. No. Two, 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 three. Four. No, you have three. We have three races. So we have two, four, six, eight, three, four. Yeah. Sorry. In the race. Okay. okay. Please feel free to go upstairs. We'll go check it out. Nancy or staff up there will answer any questions okay. you have. Okay. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. That's our local supervisor of elections, Deborah Clark of Pinellas County. So we're going to go check out the upstairs operation. Are you okay with the stairs going up the... Oh, sure. That's fine. Just... This is the other... Let's just do this while we're on the way up. This is the other view from the um, tabulation room, I guess. And, or is this from the tabulation room? No, and this is where they the load the... This is where they run the memory sticks through the system. Okay. And there's the dumb waiter in the, off in the corner there. Right. Okay, and let's go see where the ballots get into that dumb waiter from upstairs.
and now the results from the scanners get um, sent back by by phone modem. Yes, on election night. So the voter puts his ballot through the scanner, it gets counted, and uh, the paper ballot is stored in a box, and then the results are uh, zapped back to your central computer, and then that way you can have the results shortly after 7 o'clock. Right. And then if there's a problem, the original ballots get counted again when the clerk of that precinct returns them. Tried to lock you out. Okay. okay. Wow. That is a lot of. These are all. I didn't bring my ballot yet. Also, we can't zoom in on any lab. I won't. I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm just going to show how many people are in here. That is a lot of processing. Okay. Um, so you see, uh, can, I, can I fill one table? Just the hands of the uh, sure. opening? All right, let's see. We go here, and I'll just do it up. So it looks like the ballot opening machine didn't work quite that well. Or this guy likes to split the end of the envelopes, I'm not sure. Because he's got a... Um... Just to make sure. Okay. What happens if there's not enough postage on the envelope? <laughs> So how, how many, uh, did this just start today? Yes, the first day okay. about the opening. And how long will it take them to catch up with what's currently in the uh, vault, so to speak? We have about 24,000 that have been counted so far. We're hoping to finish those today. Uh -huh. 24,000 ballots so far, and these guys will knock all those out today. And then, and then it'll probably what, just be internal staff to handle the 700 or 1,000 a day that'll come in afterwards? No, they're, they're open only during canvassing board meetings. Oh, okay. So you still need um, temporary workers. Right, right. Okay. Okay, that's, um, that's good. And, um, so they get, they get processed and somebody picks up the boxes. Um, uh, now, what about the... Are they sorted by precinct at all at this point? Yes. Um, at least not ballot style. There may be several precincts in the same ballot style. But we have a certain kind of precinct as long as it's not being slow to process them. Right. It's not to On the back. Well, what's your name? It's a little star up here. Post-election audit. Uh -huh. We have to have it sorted by precinct, so it helps if we do it ahead of time. Okay, and then because when it's all done or the final hours, right, the the, the precincts will end up in separate box. They'll all be separate precincts. Box. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I've seen enough from uh, from this point, I guess. You want to go back down? Uh, let's see. Well, somebody picks them up and takes them over to. How do they get to? The what? Once they're in the pile, mm -hmm. right? They have them, you know, randomized, sorted, mm -hmm. um, and stacked. I guess I didn't quite catch that. Let's see. So she's putting them all, for example, face down. So you'll have your that. That'll be a scannable stack at this point. Okay. So that goes in the box. And then staff is picking up the boxes and they'll be putting them in the generator. Now, when it goes to the scanner, if there's. Do you, you, you have to tell the scanner which ballot style you're on? No, so it'll do all the ballot styles and, and internally sort it out. Okay. But then. If, if, but don't you have to sort them out manually as well? 
I mean, by pre-suit? We, it helps, but we don't have to. We so it's only a question of storing them when it's all over. Because otherwise you'd have the absentees and random piles and the precincts would be sorted. Right. So if, if there is a recount or a challenge or some problem, mm -hmm. you would have to have the, um, you would then have to go back and sort them all. Sure we still have to sort them even if there isn't a recount because of the required post-election manual audit. We do have to do a random audit of one race, mm -hmm. at least 2% of the the ballots cast in that one race. Right, and that's where the procedure was. Um, if you could re-explain how that will work next time, because I didn't quite like how it worked the last time I was here. So you had cards, in like, a, I don't know, not an index card, but you had some kind of paper card uh -huh. with a precinct number on it and yes. a bowl, and then you have somebody pick one of those cards. We have cards with all the races uh -huh. or questions in it. We pull that, someone from the canvassing board selects that first. And then once we know if it's if it's a single member district, then we would only put the precincts for that single member district in the bowl and choose two percent of those out of the bowl. If it's a county, if it's a citywide for this election, if it's a citywide race like the mayor or the referendum question, then we would put all the precincts for the city and just pull out two percent of that. Bowl. Okay. Now so, here's the problem I had with the last time: is we have multiple elections. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in Pinellas County. Uh -huh. uh, this time there's only St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. So that'll definitely be a St. Petersburg precinct in ballot. But let's say, let's say, dis let's say it's possible to not audit a, a precinct with one of the races on it. So, for example, I'm in District 8. I uh -huh. uh, might not pick a District 8 precinct, it might be a District 3 precinct. Right. Um, so there'll be no. Let's say extra final double check on on the, the ballot style of District Eight. Right, but that's what the logic and accuracy, accuracy test is for ahead of time to test every precinct, every race. Right. So the the bat, the audit is it's determined by state law how it's run. Right. So it's just to pick one race and two percent of the ballots from that one race. So it can be, if we have multiple cities having elections, we treat that as one election. So, because the tabulation system treats it right. as one. So Which is what will happen in November. Now, Clearwater right. will have a referendum question. Right. And St. Petersburg will have our main mayoral election in our general, right. St. Petersburg. Right. Um, and so at that point, it will be possible when it comes to auditing 2% of the precincts to draw a card from Clearwater. Right do a recount on a Clearwater precinct with only one question on the ballot and no no real, no final, at that point, nothing double-checked on St. Petersburg. Right, after the fact, correct. Right, correct. okay. I mean, just uh, my personal point of view is that each each city and each ballot style should probably have at least one final mm -hmm. um, extra confirmation step to make sure everything was correct. Right. But that's the way it is on a general election too. If we have a presidential election. You know, it could it could end up being um, you know one state house race that only covers a portion of the area, and it would be the same situation. Right. Right. And what happens if in well, that, that's good for now, I guess. So let's just, um, let's see, what are the next steps? So who looks at the signatures and can we, can we see that station? Uh, they're not doing it right now. Uh, can you that's just show me where it is? Yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah. Okay. stack the ballots that have been mailed in, the machine automatically slices them all open, and then they go to be sorted and randomized. And here we have our, what are we up to? 6,000 ballots? 4,400 on August 21st. Okay. 
Okay, and, and what does this machine do? This is our, uh, our mail ballot mailing system. It uh, inserts the ballots when they're going out, they're being mailed, it inserts the ballots, um, prints the name on the envelope, and uh, in, you know, inserts all the different pieces to the ballot kit. And then when it comes, when the ballots come back, we run the ballots through this other part of the system where it captures the signature on the outside of the envelope, uh -huh. puts it in the system, so that at the desk in here in voter services, the staff member can pull up the signature that came on the envelope and the signature from the voter file and compare it right there on their screen. Okay, so they don't so have they, to actually touch the ballot. They're not them. actually handling it. Okay, right. This is where we can sort the ballots by ballot style or by precinct, however we want. Right. So why don't you have them sorted by precinct when they when they come in? Oh, okay. So these are mostly precinct sorted. When they, when they've been so the sealed envelope gets sorted and then opened and then and then filed. Okay. And then when the ballots go out, I mean, you, 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 she said something about ordering. Do you order some ballots and print some? We order our initial mailing of mail ballots. We order mm -hmm. those because we know how many we need of each precinct ahead of time. Of the permanent absentee ballot voters right. or vote right. by mail voters. Because it's, uh -huh. it's less expensive to have it printed by a vendor in large quantities. Uh -huh. So we, as many as we can, we have printed out of, you know, out of the, by the vendor. Right. So they do those. They also print all of our test decks that you just heard about. Uh -huh. They also print all of our um, precinct ballots. We have uh -huh. a certain number at each precinct available, and they print our provisional ballots. We have a certain number at each precinct of provisional ballots. So all those are printed out, out, out of house. The only ones we print here are the mail ballot requests that come in on a daily basis, and those are printed as needed and mailed out you know, as, as requested. And then on a general election or primary countywide, uh, we also print early voting ballots in our offices. Uh -huh. And can you can you pick up a ballot and tell the difference between the uh, outside printer and inside printer? They look the same. Uh -huh. Yeah, you really can't tell. Okay, and you also have a folding machine that folds them the we same do. way? We do have a folding machine that folds uh -huh. them so they'll fit in the envelope properly. Okay, and then where are the ballots stored? Um, this is one of the ballot lockers here. Okay, so after they're all done with them, they, they go back in here. And at that point, they're in the individual precinct boxes. Or in trays, they may be in trays. But usually, um, okay. after they've been processed, yes, they're in the Okay. And then, after the election certified, in the 22 months thereafter, what happens in the meantime? Then they're stored in our warehouse in the back. Okay. After the election's been certified, after the 10-day waiting period, after the certification, then they go in the back and uh, for long-term storage, storage okay. until the requirements have been met. And then after that, a comp uh, you pay a company to come and destroy them? Right, and destroy them. Okay. All right. So we're going to go look at the signature checking station, even though they've all been checked already. Right. Basically, any of these, uh, any of these desks... Um, okay. This is our voter services department, and as the ballots come in, they are processed by staff here. They would be able to log into their computer and pull up the next name in the queue, uh -huh. and it would bring up their signature on the ballot envelope and their signature on the voter file, so they could compare it, and they would just either hit accept or skip. If they skip it, that means they want the canvassing board to review it. Uh-huh. I see. And then, so that's electronically, if it's going to get, if it needs the canvassing board reviewed, now they don't have the physical ballot in their hand. We pull the ones. We pull the ones that they have to physically review. How do you, I mean, how? You go to that, you find that precinct, right, we and have then you it. sort, hand sort through maybe up to 3,000 and pull that one out? Are they, um, are they in sequential order? They're able, no, but they're able to find the ones they need. It's, it's a small percentage. Uh -huh. But it's still tedious to pull one out. Right, but at, we do that as we go, so that, um, you know, it's however many are processed that day. We'll okay, so there'll only we... be seven, let's right. say 700 came in today. Right, we're maybe. not, pro right, exactly. Okay. 
of course, it gets a little harder on general presidential, right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, am I missing anything else in the whole operation from start to end? Um, this is also the department that processes voter registration. Any okay. applications that come in, they enter those into the system. Okay. Now, can you change your signature without coming in in person? Right. You can mail us. You can mail a signature update to us mm -hmm. and on, that a, just on an application. To verify that, does it just have to have your, it has to have your driver's license number or your last four, your social security? Yes, it does. You, you use the voter registration application to make a signature update. Uh -huh. And we just up, we entered in the system that way. And if and if you want to change, what are the things you can change just by a, uh, online web form? Your address. Um, that's really it. That's what about party? Thing. No party. It needs to be changed on an application. Okay. Again, and your name has to be changed signature. on an application, and all those two. Okay, so simply the and address. They just address. And, and we remember. have an online address form on our website. Okay. And what about county to county addresses now? Same Does thing. That work too you can now? do that online. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think because there was just a change, if you, let's say you live in one part of St. Pete, you move to the other part of St. Pete, you go to the new polling place, mm -hmm. but you haven't told anybody that you moved yet. Mm -hmm. What happens? If you are in the same city, is that what mm -hmm. you're saying? You're saying yeah. within the city? A different district, different um, ballot style. Then the. Um, polling place would ask you, is this your current signature? You would have to say, no, I've moved. And so they would look up your, they would call our address. Well, call they, went, they wouldn't be in the poll book, right? Well, if they went to their old polling place, they would right. be in the poll book if we right. didn't know about the change. Right. But if they had already told us of the change and they went to their old place, then they wouldn't be in the polling book. And our poll workers would tell them, uh, they would call our office, verify where they're supposed to be and the, let the poll work, let the, the voter know that they're supposed to be at a different precinct and they would tell them how to get there and all that. Okay. Now that gets changed if they use the NCOA system with the ad with the post office. Mm -hmm. So they update their address, they move, but mm -hmm. they never call this office. Um, if, is their voter registration updated? If we receive an address change through the NCOA, a national change of address, uh -huh. um, we send an address confirmation notice to the voter first uh -huh. and make sure that that is where they want their their voter file to indicate they live. To the old address or the new address? We send it to the old address first. Uh -huh. If it comes back undeliverable, then we send it to the, the old address with forwarding so that uh -huh. it can be forwarded to them. I see. So, but I mean, on a, what's the bottom line? On election day, the voter shows up at the new place. Mm -hmm. Will they be able to vote a regular ballot? Yes. Yes, they will. We would change their address and uh, if they're within the county. If they change, if they moved within the county, they would uh -huh. still be able to vote a regular ballot. Now, if they move from outside the county, they would need to vote a provisional ballot, unless the county has um, the electronic poll books. Mm -hmm. As of January 1st, that's a new law that will allow us to use um, to make um, immediate address changes and let the voter vote a regular ballot. Okay. And now, one more test question here, because uh -oh. I and I've actually talked to her to put you on the spot, but. Uh, the, uh, and you probably got to get back to work here. But the, um, I know some voters that are getting absentee ballots, and then but they say they like to vote at the polls. Mm -hmm. So that's no problem. They just need to bring the ballot to the polls with them, so that we can cancel that ballot and issue them a regular ballot. If they don't bring the ballot with them, then the poll worker has to call the office and make sure we haven't received their ballot yet, because in the poll in the polling book the precinct register it will say ballot mailed. So we'll know that we sent them a ballot. We uh -huh. have to make sure they haven't sent it back in before we give them another ballot. Okay. So it's in their interest to bring it with them, save time. I see. All right. So I've been speaking with Nancy Whitlock, and I think you're the Assistant Supervisor of Elections? I'm Communications Director. Communications Director. Okay. Well, thank you uh, very much, Nancy. Appreciate your time. Thank you. send them balance downstairs. Okay. Now what happened actually it was up here. What happened? 
So I'm in the, uh, I guess, the public observation room. We were here, this is where we started our tour from, so they're upstairs opening the ballots again. Oh, I forgot to ask her about ballot duplication. So the scanners are in this room. You can look through these windows. Uh, so you see somebody's over there running a lot through there. And Nancy has brought me the reports from the canvassing board confirming, I'm assuming confirming that everything was working great. Right. This first page is the list of everything they're going to be doing today. Okay. This is the control results, what we expect the test results to be. Okay. And then this is the zero report. It shows that they zeroed out the system, started from nothing. Right. And then this is the final results of the test. So you compare these two to make sure they match. Oh, okay. Oh, but that's off. Six, no, I'm just kidding. Six. Okay. All right, thank you again, Nancy. Appreciate your time here. Um, and then, oh, one more technical question. Now, I see Eva Anjour is uh, here. She's our city clerk from the city of St. Petersburg. And, but we had an ordinance change giving control of the elections to the supervisor. So who's the, who's the, the boss of the election? Is it Eva, our clerk, or is it Deborah Clark, our county supervisor? Um, Eva Andrew Hart is considered the supervisor of the election for the city. Mm -hmm. The county canvassing board has been granted the authority to canvass the election and oversee it. So um, uh, we have a county judge, Judge Patrick Cadell, and then we have a county commissioner, Karen Seal, and then our supervisor of elections, Deborah Clark, serve on the canvassing board to um, oversee the election. Eva right. is allowed to That's the three of them there, Deborah Clark, Patrick yes. Dell, and Karen Seal to the to the right. Right. And then we also have our county attorney, Joel White, in the room. As oh, well. Which one is she? She's uh, on the far end. Okay. And these are uh, board reporters taking notes. Uh, what are they? Oh, county, county, county board reporters? Right. Okay. And those, and then there's so there's an audio recording as well of the meeting, right? right? And, and they their notes. It. Eventually, they'll transcribe it and give us a copy. Okay. And so Eve is essentially an observer, making sure it goes okay. Right. We let the city clerks um, sit in as um, official observers because they're representing the city. Okay. I see. But if there's a problem, it's up to the canvassing board to make a ruling on how they want to handle it. Right. She would not have a voting uh, privilege in this case. Okay. All right. Once again. Uh, oh, no, wait. There's one thing we didn't cover, which was, oh, ballot duplication. Uh -huh. If the ballot gets destroyed or half mangled Damaged. or something. Or, we, won't, we won't say destroyed. Well, okay. <laughs> if it gets you know, partially mutilated, um, what it gets duplicated because it won't go through the scanner, right? Right. Okay. right. Those you just would, tell us how those, that works. Any uh, damaged ballots would be outstacked, um, as well as any overvotes or ballots that appear blank. Uh -huh. Maybe the the voter mismarked it. Maybe they circled the name. Maybe they just touched of, their pen on it in instead the of. Right. Uh -huh. So those are all outstacked and given to the canvassing board for review, and any that the canvassing board can determine the voter intent, like if mm -hmm. they can clearly circle the names of the ones they wanted. Right. So we have um, a ballot duplicating team that will duplicate the ballots. They'll take a fresh ballot and, and fill in the selections that the voter wanted. Right. Then the canvassing board will review those duplicated ballots to make sure they duplicated it correctly. Then the uh -huh. duplicated ballot will be run through the scanner so that it's counted properly. And that is, and why not just add up those numbers by hand? Is it? Well, you, we want them all to go through the scanner so it's officially tabulated. Uh huh. So it's all in the same sort of computer system. Right. Right. Okay. And then if they're duplicated, where where is that done? Uh, they'll be sitting right here. So okay. we haven't had any yet. Okay. Be doing and that right here. What will your estimate be? A handful for the selection? Not many. Right. Not okay. A handful. okay. All right, I think I really am done now. All right, thank you very okay. much. All right. So here's our sheets. I will...
again, I'm standing in the uh, public observation room. I'm going to just film a little bit of them running the ballots through the scanner. This was always a problem in previous elections as far as allowing me to observe. I always wanted to stand next to the scanner and see which numbers were reported and so on. But they wouldn't let me. You see the signs above, it says scanner number two and so on. Over there you see scanner number one. And uh, so they said they tested the machines that are going to be used in the election. I think you would have to test them all because what if, you know, what if they all break? So everything running smooth today? Very much so. So now they must be reviewing probably a ballot signature. Uh, this is Judge Patrick Cattell. I believe he's the longest serving canvassing board judge in the state of Florida. It's something like 20 some years he's been serving on these. The county commissioners, this time is Karen Seal, they, uh, they're on some type of rotation. Or not necessarily rotation, they're chosen, I think. And then the supervisor also sits on the on the canvassing board. Unless it's her election, then she uh, still runs the election, but doesn't have a voting a vote on the board. Although obviously her influence is extreme, to say the least, as to how things play out. Okay, so I guess we're going to have some ballots duplicated. Now you notice they put the, the ballot duplication people are very far away from the windows. Instead of, you know, really there shouldn't be any windows. These glassed-in rooms were not here until about 2004, I guess. Or almost seems official, but what do you think happens if there's actual observers in the room? Do you think they run around grabbing ballots and run screaming out of the building? No. So, let's see. They're copying the ballot. Um, are duplicating ballots for the canvassing board. It's August 21st, 2013. So 
which Nancy can uh, explain. I'm looking. Uh, Karen Seal is is in the in the rear there, and up front is somebody doing the court reporting or the notes for the the county. We have the county lawyer, Judge Patrick Cadell. Trevor Clark is standing and maybe saying something. Again, Karen Seal, County Commissioner, um, an employee, and Eva Anjur, Anjur, I'm sorry, I don't always pronounce her name correctly, uh, St. Petersburg City Clerk. shirts hanging here. Um, I guess this is to show what maybe the precinct clerks get or employees.